Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Side DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm a host of my guru 31. Sorry there was no truck video yesterday. There was just simply no time with my work schedule. There's only an hour and a half between qualifying and lock. Uh, very quick window there. Um, sa today, same thing. This is a speculation video. I'll do the best I can to just try to point out some players that I like. And um, if you want the full coverage, then all you have to do is sign up for FS DFS. The description is in the video or the video description has the link to our site for pricing. It's $5 a weekend for NASCAR. It is $6 a day for the whole everything um, on the site. So it's a pretty decent value for you there. Okay, so let's get into it. Ryan Truex is coming and he's jumping in the 20 car. He has been really good. My model has him possibly get in the pole. Um, should do really well. Uh, Dominator, probably a prime play if he doesn't start up to the close, because, but I still think you can treat him as a Dominator because I think that he's one that can get up through the field. He's not racing for a title here. He's only racing for trophies. He can use pit strategy or whatever he needs to. Sometimes he's turned into a field mileage races. He can um, doesn't have to stay out for those. He can pit earlier or later, do whatever he needs to to get up there and be able to get the track position to potentially win this. Sheldon Creed. Uh, projects really well here also he finished 11th in 2023 but i always use him as an upside dominator i, I know he's going to eventually win um, the race here he's been knocking on the door and he's been making less mistakes he's almost there and i think you know kind of the pressure of driving a joe gibbs car and not having a win is uh could be weighing on him but he should definitely be able to uh, have a good day but i don't know if he can win this but he might be able to get out there and dominate if he just looks good in practice and qualifying Cole Custer has done really well on this track previously. I think he's also an upside dominator. If he finishes, if he starts first or second, it looks good in practice and he might turn into a purple dom if he gets like one of those whole positions there and again has some decent speed in practice. So keep an eye on that. Sammy Smith, um, finished sixth here. He's run well at, at Pocono also. And again, I have him as an upside dominator. I think he's one that can go out and lead at some point. But um, if he does start first or second, then that might turn him to the purple. Allgaier, I think, is another one that's a dominator. He's got multiple years of experience here. He's always run well here and found his way, no matter where he started, out to the lead at, at different points, um, understands the track and the tricky triangle. So I, I think that he's definitely going to be a dominator. Brandon Jones, finished seventh. He's always a GPP. One, uh, he's ran okay here, but it's not the best track for him. It's not the worst track for him. It's kind of in between, so that's why I have this in GPP. William Bryan jumps into the 17 car. Uh, Chase Elliott finished third in it last year here. He struggled in Xfinity his couple of runs that he's had, but I think that he's just too talented not to count out. And again, he's another one like Truex that isn't running for uh, track position or for, um, for stage points so he can do things to enhance his track position let other people have to do things to get stage points and that could help him this is kind of hard to pass towards um you know on long runs here so i, I think that that should help benefit him aj almendinger didn't run here last year i I'd see him as a gpp not one that I, I think is really strong at this track austin hill won last year here I have to see how he does in practice qualifying again. If he's up on the pole, then I could probably consider him more of a cash or dominator play. But I think a GPP just would looking at the field here. Sam Mayer finished second last year. Again, a GPP. Sam Mayer has been up and down. He can win a race. He can finish last. Um, I just I don't see. He's not as erratic as some of the other ones, uh, like a John Hunter Nemechek that I complain about in some of the other series. But he is one that um, the range of outcomes is a lot wider than I feel is safe for cash plays. But in GPPs, I think you got to consider him. Again, practice of qualifying, if he's good, he could be an upside dominator. Jeb Burton, if he starts this fire forward, he's going to be a fade. If he starts anything 25th on back, just write that down. Then I think he could potentially be a cash play. Ryan Sieg, same thing. I think he's starting a little bit too far forward here. If he starts 15th on back, I think he could be a cash play at his price point. Jesse Love, I don't care where he starts. He's been a cash play. He's been aggressive and figured his way out um, to do really well in uh, in his rookie year. He, he's The learning curve is not very steep with him, and he's done pretty well. So I think he's a cash play no matter where he starts. The three prime plays just ended up together. I did not have it sorted by starting position when I figured out who the primes were and when I sorted it, I was like, wow, they all ended up in the same range. Corey Heim finished 37th. The car had like a transmission problem or something, so it wasn't his fault. Um, 
Josh Berry finished 24th. He had some issues too, but he's been, he's jumping in the car for um, filling in Well, Haley Regan's out now. So uh, he's taken over at least for this race for AM racing. It's an old Brett Moffat car uh, finished. Um, the Brett Moffat car finished decent last year here. Before, well, it would Brett Moffat have finished 25th. I wonder if he'll come back to AMM. That would be cool. Uh, so anyways, it, it's a decent car, decent team. And Josh Berry is a, a decent driver, so I think that he will do quite well here. And Chandler Smith, um, even though he finished 20th last year, um, not in this Joe Gibbs car, he's just been really well. He hasn't um, qualified well at Pocono, but again, that was in different equipment. Maybe he, he gets up there. But I think between these three, um, again, this is just preliminary, but these are the three building blocks that I really want to um, look at to try to be able to build my lineup. Uh, Clement is usually GPP play. Uh, if, if he starts 17th, finishes 15th, like last year, I mean, that's great at that price point. Again, you just have to see where he starts. Um, I usually start at like him 20th on back, but anywhere between 15 and 20, I think you can play him as GPP 20th on down. You can play him as cash at anything higher. It's going to be a fade for me. Riley Hurts is the other one that's like super volatile, even more than mayor, um, has the potential runs really well last year Pocono did finish fourth but we've seen um him find trouble and disasters and stuff so uh GPP for me and this one uh Shane Van Gisbergen um you know after the win and the disappointment of the cup series last week in Chicago comes back here's what you knew to a change against Van Gisbergen he is going to he's still learning new track he's going to be pushing the car's limits in practice and qualifying. If he doesn't hit anything, then he's going to be a cash play no matter where he starts because he has done really well figuring things out and adapting. If he damages the car or if he looks like he's struggling, he still hasn't figured out where the limit is to push the car, then that, to me, is more of a GPP play. Resolaf has been solid. Uh, he had another mechanical issue with the car, so he finished 36 last fifth last year, but uh, not a 35th place car. He should be any if he starts 15th on back. It's usually a, a cash play for me. He's um a really talented young driver that's pretty good on anything that you put him in. The Jordan Anderson team has been solid. Kyle Sieg, uh, this started way too far far. Kyle Sieg, we like 25th on back, also maybe 30th on back. Um, he's like probably one of the best of the worst drivers in decent equipment, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Matt De Benedetto, uh, 17th last year. He wasn't in the car. The car finished 17th. He wasn't here. He was in truck series last year. Uh, he um, he's been decent recently. He had some decent results in Cup and everything in Pocono. So I, I think he's one that you can sprinkle in GPP lineup depending on where he starts. If he starts like in the top ten, unless he's like the fastest car in the field, um, I'd probably be fading him there. But anything. 20th on back, maybe 15th on back, just based on his um, experience level, I think is good. Taylor Gray did well in the truck race. Uh, I think he's a cash player also in um, the Joe Gibbs 19 car here. It's, it's definitely awesome equipment for him to be in. It's not the hunt car. He, he got the um, cream of the crop here. So AK is a good price. We'll see how he does in practice and qualifying, but I think he's going to be a solid cash play, maybe even a borderline prime play if Heimberry or Smith um, turn into like more of a like dominator play or like a fade just because of something that happens in practice and qualifying. So keep him in mind as like almost a fourth option for a prime play. Clearman's usually uh, solid no matter where he races, cash um, there. Honeyman's been solid also at 48, um, called Money Man. Unless he qualifies egregiously high, I think he should be fine. Josh Williams has been solid. Same thing as Honeyman. Uh, he always has some floor. Finished 36 last year, but it was in a junk car. Colleague car has been an upgrade, even though colleague's program hasn't been great this year. So I think he's usually playing cash unless he starts too high, too. So I think that's like the story between like Honeyman and Williams and Anthony Alfredo. All three of these here are solid cash plays. They usually have some floor. You want them starting probably. Uh, 15th on down. Uh, Thomas Anzueta is uh, going to be in the four, I believe. Um, I haven't. Um, see the one that's not in the DK. I might have messed this up here. Um, and I'm fading him anyways. 
either Ansolin or Malzoni. I can't remember which one wasn't in the DK player pool, but their other one, you had like a Garrett Smithley out there. You had um, a couple of different options that they threw in. Um, DK pricing plays, yeah. Okay, Mazzoni's in there, so he's not the one. So um, I think it was Jay Buford, I think, was the other one. Like, I don't think they really knew who was going to be in the four car. So this one shouldn't be red. This red should be on here. Um, he's not in the player pool. He's the one that has listed on NASCAR.com is in the four. So that's why I was just speculating there. But if it is one of the other ones, I'm still not super enthralled. Just have to see. Uh, maybe a GPP, but not a cash play. Ellis, uh, GPP, unless he starts really far down towards the bottom, Alpha Prime cards have been solid. Patrick Emerly, same thing here. Um, probably starting this range can be a GPP play. Uh, Blicky is a fade. It's not a road course. Uh, Weatherman's good. Um, DGM's not a great team, but not a bad team. So depending on where he starts, he needs to start 25th on back. Definitely 30th on back to be a cash play. Pool, same thing. He's been very good in his Alpha Prime car. At 5,500, it's a great price tag. Again, unless he starts egregiously high, anything above like 25 um, is usually where my my mark is there. Then he should be in play for cash. Massey uh, ran the truck race, um, did okay. Uh, green light is is okay here. Like not many cars finish like laps down here because it's such a long track, and and there's not many like not a ton of attrition. So I think he should be in play. William Perkins is a solid in the C car. Again, it's like this whole range of all these drivers. I like Weatherman to pull the best driver-wise, but I think all of them you can make a case for depending on where they start here. Daniel Dye of the Collie car. Like, the Collie finished 10th last year with a different driver, but uh, Dye's been okay. And uh, we just have to see. Like He hasn't qualified really well, and if he does do that, then I think he's fine. But if he qualifies like anywhere in like the teens or something. I think he's going to maybe be borderline fade at 66 when you have so many other evenly matched drivers to him in this range that could be, um, you know, starting down below and off you more place differential. Melzoni again, should not be red here, but it's still going to be a fade in the Joey Jude Gays car. I'm still not playing. Um, this is the guy that's not in the player pool. Uh, Melzoni is, um, but uh, not someone who's playing. And Dawson Cram and Fanning also. The Mike Harmon cars have just been horrible and um, sometimes start in park. So not touching that. So again, sorry, speculation. This is what I have for you. Um, again, hi, I'm Barry Smith. I really like. Um, keep your eye on Taylor Gray where he qualifies there. Up top, Ryan Truex. And then uh, some value plays are probably where I'm going in, in cash. So three out of the four between hi, I'm Barry Smith and uh, Taylor Gray. Probably Truex. Um, and we're still like all in like the, the low range here. So if Chandler Smith has the pull, I, I think he's, well, yeah, he's in the 10 K ones worth it, but um, you know, I'm not going to push to try to get Byron in my lineup unless uh, he by far is the best car in practice or something like that. So I think that helps you build kind of a balanced lineup. Um, I don't have the, I forget what the top GPB is. I'm assuming it's 10 K here. Um, guys, just because I don't know, like I haven't had a chance to look at some other sites to see like what they're projecting for ownership or who's touting what or things like that. Um, so again, again, that's just going to have to be, you have to sign up for, um, you know, at the website to get that information today. So, uh, I should be able to have uh, the cup video out tonight for you, um, or early tomorrow morning or something goofy happens uh with my evening but uh i look forward to that that should be accurate uh shouldn't be rain should be very hot out there so uh, i think xfinity will give us a uh, similar conditions tomorrow for cup so it should give us a good indication as to um we practice and qualifying today for cup and the xfinity race like what we have to look for tomorrow so thanks for watching appreciate it if you have any questions from chat below hit me with mega row through one on twitter or x Again, if you want more information on FSI DFS to get to our pricing page, you get into the Discord for the day. Uh, $6 for all sports, uh, $5 for the weekend for NASCAR. And um, that will even get you through next week to get you through like Friday and Saturday for the Brickyard um, races. Well, I don't know if the truck is Brickyard. I think it's like the road course. So that's what I got for you. If you know how to get a hold of me, good luck in your contest. Hope you have a good weekend. I'll see you next time.